Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Balance of Opinion Sports Podcast. With your guy, Kingy Crush Glass and Manila. Uh, Night Vinci, star of the eagle, feed the soul. And uh, the coach of all coaches. Coach Jabs, steady chasing them trophies. <laughs> and no intro, Brando. Brando, yeah, no intro still. What was it, <laughs> fourth week, no intro? <laughs> so go ahead, Jabs, take it away. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very special guest with us today. You know what I mean? In fact, it's a, it's a special environment for me. Usually, uh, I'm at home, but I'm actually at my place of work. A place where, like I said, we're constantly chasing trophies. But nonetheless, the special guest that we have today is a guy who I've, 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 I've kind of seen him grow up. You know what I mean? He came to us, um, you know what I mean? Kind of young, no facial hair. And I always give him props for his, his ability to grow a beard. It's actually cool. I think I voted him best beard on the team. Hey, a guy whose intensity is second to none. Every time I see him on the football field, his eyes are like this big. I promise you, they're that big. But he's a guy who we um, have given the responsibility to protect our, our, our quarterback. You know what I mean? Some guys want to call him franchise. But with him on our football team, we were able to produce uh, a record-holding uh, quarterback for the most passing yards in the season, um, a heck Crichton winner, and also a national championship. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the pod, Logan Bandy. Hey, Logan Bandy. Hey. 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 Thanks for having me. Thank you for coming on, sir. Yeah, thanks for having me. Exciting. So, dude, can, can I ask you a question? Is, is this going to be like your first interview as a quote-unquote professional? Yeah, man. This is, uh, you know, I'm used to being grilled by all the all the professional teams, so this is kind of a nice break for me, honestly. <laughs> That's what's up, man. We just, we, we go keep it like, you know how we do. Sounds good. Sounds good. I got a question for you. D didn't your brother, isn't your, your, your brother went to medical school in Grenada? Yeah, he actually, he was down in Grenada for, for four years. He loved it there. A little, little too warm. I, I bet you was hanging out with my cousins and uh, drinking all that good natural juices. Yeah. <laughs> I was always telling them to try and find your family because you, you told me about that a couple of years ago. <laughs> he's too, he's too uh, chicken to do anything like that. So I'll tell you what, if you find my family, he might still be there. Trust me, man. They would have <laughs> they, they 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 treated him good. Anyhow, man, as, as you know, sure. man, we wanted to bring you on, um, you know, for some of the body of work that you've already done. Uh, we, we, we were in the midst of the NFL draft, but we do have the uh, uh, CFL draft coming up. Um, just kind of explain what, what your experiences have been so far as far as um, you know, what, what excitement have you have, uh, building up towards the CFL draft? Yeah. I mean, it's kind of, uh, it feels like an out of body experience, honestly. Like it's the, the last two months of, have flown by and it's, you know, at, there was one point in time where we were getting interviews with, from, from teams like two, three, four times a week. Right. So, um, just kind of trying to take this whole experience stride by stride and, and, and slow down and, and enjoy the ride, but it's it's kind of tough too when it flies by like this. So, kind of kind of crazy time. So, are are you shocked that on, on some people's draft boards you're slated to go high as the second overall pick? You know I mean, or is is that is that shocking to you, or do you feel like you know what I, I've I've put in my work? This is what I should be going down. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I work my ass off, and and my. <laughs> If you watch my film, solid, and, and really that's what I back myself on whenever they ask, you know, if I deserve to be in this draft is, is go watch my film and it, and it speaks for itself. So there's only so much you can do at this point and, and it really depends on, you know, who goes down south and, and not, but um, yeah, no, my work speaks for itself. That's, that's all I got to say about that. The eye in the sky doesn't lie. I mean, and that's definitely the truth. Um, I'll tell you what, I, I've been very, very fortunate. I, I'm actually uh, was able to bear witness of uh, some of that greatness live. I mean, so, um, you know, you know, not only I'm your coach, I'm, I'm, I'm also a fan. So I'm, I'm hoping you the best uh, throughout this whole process. Um, I, I do have to ask you a question, though. Um, I don't want to hog up all the time. I know everybody has a bunch of questions for you, but. Um, you know, it's kind of funny watching the draft yesterday or the first round in the NFL draft yesterday. There was a question that kind of stood out to me. And uh, I just wanted to kind of ask you, um, you know what I mean, the same question, uh, which, which I think is, is, is it's a pretty cool question, but it's also loaded. <laughs> okay. So whichever, wherever location you land, wherever you get drafted to, what can that team, what can that organization expect 
from Logan Bandy. Mm. Yeah, I mean you're gonna you're gonna get an athlete who's uh, who's gonna try and crack that roster right off the bat. I'm gonna come. I'm gonna I'm gonna come into camp and I'm gonna I'm gonna work my ass off like I did at the UC and and I kind of like to to draw back to my my rookie season and and how I didn't start on the O line and and that that pissed me off and and it, I really took that personally and I followed that up with the, the season that I had in 2018. So um, yeah, I, I'm gonna channel that energy and I'm gonna I'm gonna go make a team. Is what I'm gonna do. That's what's up. I mean, no nonsense, Bandy. I like it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know it. And the Vince, you want to ask him, ask him your question, sir? Uh, you know, first of all, I just want to thank you for coming uh, on the pod. Join us, man. Really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, my question is, where is your mental state right now in the past year due to the coronavirus and, like, no games, you know, and sometimes probably no practice, at, you know, or, yeah, I guess, virtual practice and all of that stuff? Yeah, I'm, for me, it was all about uh, frame, uh, framing it with like a positive mindset. You know, um, I really took it as an opportunity to get healthy, and 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 I did. Uh, this is the healthiest I've been in in years. So, um, and then you know, focus on training whenever I can. And you know, obviously, it, it was really tough not to to follow up a championship season. But um, you know, it's again, it's all about framing, and and I made myself better over that year year and a half. So. Um, it's it's all about that positive mindset. So it's safe to say you, you, you still find a way to, to get it in all the time. There's there's always a way. Even if you have to bend the rules a little bit, there's always a way to get it in. Yeah. If you oh. want it bad enough. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. For exactly. sure, for sure. Hey Logan, I was just wondering, uh, I was reading up on you a bit and I see that you're not only a two sport athlete, but your first love was hockey. Um how has hockey or playing hockey growing up affected or helped your your football? Like, has it has it had any effect? Uh, just transferring maybe certain skills, maybe footwork. I, I don't know. It's it's obviously totally different, but nonetheless, give me some insight, brother. Yeah, I mean, I, I never played at a, a super super high level of hockey because I was always you know big and slow, and and I didn't I didn't like playing defense, so I was always a always a goal scorer. But um, I'd say for the most part, like. You know, just just the emphasis on the athleticism and the agility, and and I feel like that really translating translates into my into my game for football. So it kind of set the set the stones for that athletic ability, and you know, not maybe not uh, much of a direct um, transfer into into football, but more of a you know overall you know introduction into into the world of sport and 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 being competitive and and all that. So. What what is the toughness comparison? Just being, I know you said you didn't play high level, but yeah. a hockey player to a football player, that just that toughness, because you know it's two gritty sports, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, how do they compare? Oh, football is way tougher, and, and the reason I say that is, um, you know, hockey you'll you'll throw a hit and, and get in the dirty areas, but you know, for me, I'm fighting the guy across from me every single play for for seventy plays a game, right? So, um, and there's nothing better than battling the best guy. On, on the other side so um and that's something you just don't get in hockey all the time so that's an easy that's an easy answer for me that's football <laughs> yeah 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 thanks logan thanks Mandy. good good luck uh and congratulations on your success so far bro i appreciate it thank you no, yes uh i'd also like to thank you for coming on uh when you started playing football what was the hardest thing that you had to work on while when you started playing yeah, I mean, I, well, not as much in youth football, but, you know, once I started getting up to, uh, you know, more of a serious level, I've always been kind of undersized. And that's something that I, you know, through high school and then first, second year university, I actually had to, you know, really, really kind of build my game around my athleticism and, and ability to bend and stuff. So um, I, I've never had the 350 pound frame to throw around in the box. So it's all about, you know, hand placement and head placement and all that stuff. So. Uh, I, I really look at my game and, and it was a focus on the mental aspect rather than, you know, physical. And and that's kind of where, I, where I got, you know, where I am right now. So. Okay. Okay. Um, throughout your playing time now, has there been any teammate that shocked you while playing from high school to university? Have you seen like a play, a, a player that you think is, 
off the charts since you've been playing? Well, you know what? I uh, obviously I'd um, like to like to mention the the Phil Potts, but I think the uh, the craziest thing I've ever seen was I was I was in Texas for Team Alberta, and and Chuba Hubbard was on that team. Um, this was U16, and it was a, an outside zone to the right, and I watched him take it to the sideline, turn, run to the other sideline for like a 70 yard touchdown. It was one of the craziest things I've ever seen outran every single guy on that side so um that's that's when i realized that's some some man speed right there <laughs> yeah. Speed speed. yeah 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 uh, i got a question uh what team would you like to be drafted by i like you let's say your favorite childhood team you'd be like to draft it by and a team because everybody has a team that they don't like and a team you don't want to go to you know just as a fan, as you growing up as a uh, fan. <coughs> That's a loaded question. Right? He's not going to answer that. <laughs> it's, hey, listen, sir, Wherever you I can go, be politically right? correct here. You can just plead the fifth and he move on. It's all right. Hey, you, know, you know what? I, uh, I grew up um, watching the Stamps, you know, my whole life. And, and that kind of just built a love for the, for the CFL and an appreciation for it. So I don't really have anything against um, any of the teams per se, but... Um, you know, I've, I've, I've seen the different fan bases, the different, you know, legacies behind these teams. So, um, no matter where I go, you get something different, right? So it's something to be excited about. I wouldn't say that I don't want to go anywhere, but, um, yeah, no, it's an exciting process. Bit of a loaded question. I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's okay. You can please. <laughs> Draft. I understand, I'll, sir. I'll, uh, hey, hey, Logan, I'll answer that question for you. You're going to go to the team that pays the most. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, I want who wants me, right? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, something similar to Da Vinci's, but if you had a team that you know you could help, what team would that be? Again, if you could I just go anywhere, forget being drafted. If you could just sign on the dotted line for whatever you wanted for any team, NFL or CFL, what team do you think you could help the most? Right. I think that's kind of um... – Pretty cool question too, because you know, looking at the CFL teams, there's just talking with teams. There's some that you know see me moving into that guard role um, almost immediately, right? And then there's some teams that say, you know, what you're going to come in and be the the sixth, seventh guy that you know blocking tight end or whatever. So I think it's um, you know every every team that's looking to draft me, they have their own needs and their their own idea of where what I'm going to do, and you know I'm going to go in and fill that role. So. I know which team you'll help the most. That's an easy question. <laughs> <laughs> That's the team you can help the most. But yeah, the, the team that would pay me the least too. <laughs> <laughs> one one more question before you get out of here. I don't I don't I don't want really to drag it on. If you had to switch positions, w- would you feel comfortable playing your tight end? Oh yeah, one hundred percent. I got the uh, easily the best hands on the dinos. <laughs> I've seen some of the receivers that we have in the program and. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not, it's hey, nothing on the coaching. It's just, you know, some of those guys have bricks for hands. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, I want to, you know, Peter Nicastro beat a young receiver in a, in a catching contest wearing his lineman gloves with the, with the leather, leather palms, no grip, um, no contest. So that's just kind of goes to show that, you know, some of us big guys are athletes too. Okay, okay. You got it or you don't, he's right? The coach for that exactly, team. Exactly. I don't know who he is, but damn. <laughs> well, you, from watching your clips and from hearing Jabs talk about you and, you know, reading up on you, uh, I think any team would be blessed to have you, you know, because uh, it's all around there, your work ethic and everything. And Yeah, so I think any team would be blessed to have you, a talent like you. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah, it's an yeah, exciting okay. time for sure. For sure, it's not it's not the size of the dog, it's the size of the fight in the dog that matters. Exactly, you know yeah, exactly, yeah. So yet again, sir, thank you very much. We hope the best for you. You know, we'll try to keep in touch and try to follow your journey as well. Yeah, you know I mean, is there anything you guys want to say to the, the young man before we let him get on with his day? He's very busy, you know. In, hey, in, in closing, you know, what I mean, it's clearly that I haven't worked you guys hard enough. I thought the hardest thing that you would have to deal with throughout your career was dealing with Coach Jabs, but I, I guess it's not. So I got to whoop some some tail even harder. 
But I will say this, um, as, as a player and as an alumni of, uh, uh, or future alumni of uh, the University of Calgary, this is your opportunity to shoot a plug out, you know what I mean, or, or uh, you know what I mean, um, say what you, uh, what you think about the University of Calgary's football program. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's nothing better in the country, man. There's, you know, the, the culture is just a winning culture and, you know, there's teams that are happy to make the playoffs and, and if, if that's what you want to, you know, go to, then, then sure, that's fine. If you want to start in your first year, that's fine. But if you want to go win a championship, there's only one school I can think of that'll put up a fighting chance. So um, that's the UC for you. And that's all, that's all I really have to say about programs. So. Well, Logan, it's, uh, you know what I mean? I, I, I'm hoping that I get one more year uh, to coach up, but if I don't, man, it's, it's, it's been an exciting ride. Uh, you know what I mean? You're just a joy to be around. And like I said, you know what I mean? Like Navinci said, whichever team you, you go to, I know they're going to get a guy who is going to be committed to that organization who's definitely going to uplift them. Um, you know, not only have you, uh, um, you know, had success on the field, uh, correct me or not, are you, are you not an academic All-Canadian as well? Four times, yeah. Mm. Okay. Can brag on that too. <laughs> yeah. not just yeah. Yeah. Sir, thank you. Because yeah. a lot of times people think that football players are dumb jocks. I'm happy and I'm grateful for what you're doing for yourself. Not for anybody else, but for yourself. So thank you again, sir. Thank you so much. Logan, all the best. Um, we'll, we'll be watching. I got my fingers crossed. And um, yeah, hopefully you and your brother will go back to Grenada and uh, en enjoy some of that sweet, sweet natural juices over there. <laughs> yeah, I got to go visit. I've heard, heard nothing but nice things. So, All right, that's what's up. Thanks, Logan. Thanks, guys. Thank you, man. Thank you. Later. Yo, what are you guys feeding uh, the football players in Calgary? Like, there's a lot of talent coming out of uh, Alberta in general, but Calgary specifically. What's going on over there? It's Alberta beef. That's what we eat, man. <laughs> Being that ABG, anybody could get it. All right, son? Triple A grade. But dude, you know what? In all honesty, you know, um, you know, I, I've been around a, a lot of programs, both sides of the border, uh, professionally and non-professionally. And I will say this about the University of Calgary is uh, I got to give credit to the coaches and the, and the environment that we that they that they create um, and here for these guys. Um, I keep telling guys if you want to have the closest, you know, I mean, experience to the pro level without being a pro, then they got to be the UFC. You know, I mean, a lot of guys, when they get to, um, you know, the professional ranks, um, you know, it's not a big jump for them because they've been practicing like a pro the last four years of their career. So um, I, I will say that, you know what I mean? And uh, we have guys who are, who, who come in, they're committed. And man, you know what I mean? Like I said, man, they're, they're, they're steady chasing trophies right along with us. So uh, like I said. Throw that, throw that ring up one more time before uh, we move on. You want to oh, throw that yeah. ring up? You want to throw that ring up one more time before we move on? Oh, you trying to get him to do the hover, huh? <laughs> which which, which are you talking about? <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> what, what, what year is that? What year is ring that, ring that is? This is uh, the 2019, um, you know what I mean, Vanier Cup uh, National Championship ring. Um, like I said, it's uh, the last time football was played in Canada. Um, we, we were the, uh, the champions. Uh, it's pretty cool because the trophy still stays on Calgary's campus. So we had it, um, you know, I'd like to say with the longest tenure championship team. So, uh, you know what I mean, we just have it here at the office. And uh, I was like, man, let me, uh, let me uh, bling bling it for y'all a little bit.